Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Hasomi cordless vacuum cleaner. Now there are actually different versions of this model as far as the power and the runtime, uh, but this particular one is a 22.2 volt and it has a maximum runtime of up to 30 minutes. So what I want to do is get it unboxed, get it charged up and then we'll have a look. So we'll start off by unboxing it to see what's in there. So as we open the box, the first thing that pops out is the warranty card. Uh, so as you can see on here that you actually get a two year guarantee which personally I think is always really good. A uh, couple of options, you can either go onto the hosomotech.com website uh, or you can just scan the QR code. So it's, it's things like that that I really like. So we'll just put that to the side. Uh, first thing we've got is the main one. So it's got a really nice matte finish to it uh, which looks very nice. Next thing, so we've got some raw plugs, so I'll cover those in a moment. And we've got several tools in here. And so this is a, like a, a combination type of tool. And I'll pop that to one side. So we've got a floor head. So that looks quite interesting. This is the charging dock. And next, we've got a little crevice tool. Put that to one side. And then we've got the two parts of the vacuum. The main floor head so that looks very interesting and then the last thing in the box is a filter so what I want to do is to get all of this cleared uh, I'll make sure that the battery on the vacuum itself is fully charged up because I'll give it a go later uh, but let's have a look so now that I've got everything unboxed then just to show you this to put the vacuum together it is very easy you just locate it at the bottom here and then the two parts at the top, they just clip together. So you can take it apart. So if you want to, then just press the button and then it just pulls apart. So the first thing you'll notice when you're holding this is it is a very lightweight design compared to quite a few other cordless vacuums. Uh, I know once you get the, the attachments on and the things like the main drive head, then that will make a difference. It is a nice easy vacuum to hold. Uh, this kind of design where you've got the bin at the bottom here and then you've got the, the motor at the top isn't unique in the market. Quite a few other brands uh, use this kind of design, but to be fair, it works. Uh, you've got the trigger just here, so it's on the, the handle there. And then to switch it on, you just press the button there. So it's a, a nice, easy design. Uh, the other thing to point out is with other brands, uh, I will say it, so with Dyson, then you actually have to keep your finger on the trigger for it to work. Uh, but clearly what these guys have done is they've chosen to go along the route of what people really want and that's where you don't have to keep your finger on it because I must say that's something that a lot of people comment on on the Dyson products where you have to keep your finger on the trigger uh, so by having this option where you just pull the trigger and then you do it again to turn it off I really like that so I'll just show you on top of the vacuum and the first one to note is you've got the battery status indicator. So as you can see, it's got three bars on there, which means it's fully charged. And then when it gets down to the last bar and then starts flashing, then that clearly needs charging again. The other button you've got on top here, and uh, what this will do is this will actually toggle between the maximum suction and the minimum suction. Uh, I'll just show you that. So hopefully you could hear the difference between the two as it was going between the maximum and minimum suction. Now on this vacuum, uh, it has a maximum runtime of up to 30 minutes. Clearly that's going to be on the minimum suction. On the maximum suction, Hosomi are claiming that you get around 15 minutes. 
Uh, personally, I've not actually tried it to see whether you get 15 minutes from it. Uh, that really depends on what tools and accessories that you're using. Uh, if you're using the little crevice tool, I'll go through the tools in a moment, but if you're using the crevice tool, then there is a very good chance that you could get 15 minutes at a maximum 30 minute run time. Uh, what you will find is if you were using the main floor head, and if you're going to vacuum, say on a carpet, then sometimes those run times are not quite achievable. Uh, but as I say, it's really trial and error. Also, when it comes to charging the battery, uh, it normally takes around three or four hours. Uh, when I first had this vacuum, it was about half charged. So it, it took around a couple of hours to get it fully charged. But what I'd normally recommend when you first get the vacuum, just give it a really good charge and then you know you're ready to go. So when it's full of dirt, then clearly you're going to need to empty it. And all you need to do is you've got a little clip on the front here. So you just go over to a bin and empty it like that. Just show you that again. So you've just got the clip and just empty it. So it's a nice easy design. So apart from emptying the bin, you're also going to need to maintain the vacuum. And to do that, all you need to do is just take these two parts apart. And to take the bin off, all you need to do is just look around the side here and you've got a couple of little padlocks so you've got open and closed so if we just rotate it then that comes off so it's really nice easy design to do this so to take the filter out all you need to do is just rotate that and then to take the inner shroud out all you would normally do is open the bottom and you just need to rotate it just so it covers the connections that goes over it and then we've taken that all apart so, yep, again, easy to take apart. Um, what I try to do is I try to show people how easy they are to, uh, to maintain and to clean. Because uh, personally, I think that's a really important thing on any cordless vacuum. When it comes to the cleaning of this, uh, personally, I wouldn't recommend putting it in water. Uh, there are some other vacuums where the bin itself is all plastic. There are no metal connections. But as you can see around here, then there are a couple of metal contacts. So personally, I wouldn't recommend uh, submerging this within water. I'd normally just recommend getting a, a damp cloth, just wiping it round, uh, make sure that's dry before you put it all back together. Uh, with the filter, so that, that inner shroud should be okay. So again, do the same thing. First of all, when you first get it, clearly it's gonna be quite dusty. Then take it outside, do it in, uh, say in an outside bin. Just get a paintbrush and just get any dust and dirt off out there. Uh, when it comes to the filter, this is the filtration unit itself. Uh, this is actually washable, uh, as quite a few vacuums are. What I would always say is that when you've washed this, make sure it's completely dry before you put it in the vacuum. Now, one thing I'd normally say, with I suppose on a lot of my videos, is when it comes to washing the filter, as I just mentioned, make sure it's completely dry. But what you will find is that can be really frustrating because if you've just washed a filter, then for it to dry completely, then it can take around 24 hours. And in theory, that means you've got 24 hours without using your vacuum. Uh, but what I'd normally say is to go and buy a spare filter. And that way, when you've washed this, you can pop the other one back in the vacuum straight away. So Hosomi have already thought of that. So on this model, you actually get two filters, which personally I think is brilliant. Uh, they've already thought of that conundrum. And then when it comes to putting the vacuum back together, all you do is you just pop the filter in there, rotate it till it locks in to place there. So that's all located properly. Shut the bin and then put this lid back on like that. Again, with the padlocks, you just rotate it so it completely locks into place. It's a nice solid feel. And then locate it at the bottom, clip it together at the top, and then you're ready to go. So if you're going to use the vacuum as a handheld, then I always think the range of tools and accessories that come with it are very important. So the first one is this. This is the little crevice tool. It just clips in the end there. Uh, this is ideal if you're doing, say, little parts in corners uh, or down the side of a sofa, then you've got a really nice, good quality tool here to help you do that. The next one is this. Uh, this is like a two-in-one tool. And again, that just clips on like that. So you've got the solid plastic end here, uh, which is probably good for doing things like stairs. Or if you just push that up like that, then you've got a softer uh, like dusting brush, 
which is ideal for more delicate areas. Uh, I normally say that's good if, if you're doing, say, in a kitchen, uh, if you're doing on your work surface, then you don't necessarily want the plastic end. Uh, you just want a, a, a softer brush to stop you scratching things like your hob or things like that. Now this is the main drive head that comes with the vacuum. Now on this one, the bristles on this brush are pretty stiff. So if you vacuum in on carpet, then that's ideal. What it does also come with is this. Uh, this is a much softer brush. So that's ideal for things like hard floors. So if you've got things like laminate floor or tiles or vinyl, then that is ideal for it. And to change the brush between the two, I will just show you quickly. You've got a latch on this side. You just pull that and then the brush itself will come out. And then to pop the new one in, you just locate it in there and then you shut it. So it's a really easy process to change between the two. Uh, quite a few vacuums you will find you need to get a coin or a screwdriver, undo it all. Uh, it really is uh, quite labour intensive but yeah, these guys have proven that it doesn't need that. Now although this is the main drive head for the floor, what you can also do is you can actually use it when you're using it as a handheld. So once it's clipped in there like that, then if I switch it on, first of all you see that the brush rotates, so when you're doing things like the stairs, uh, or if there's an area that is really limited that you couldn't get the full vacuum in, then this is ideal. Um, also you have got a light on the front, so if you want to vacuum in the dark for example, uh, or again, if you wear your vacuum in, say under your bed, clearly you've not got lights in there, so having a, a little couple of LED lights on the front is a really good idea as well. So clearly at some point you're going to need to charge the vacuum, and this is going to help you do it. This is the charging dock, or the base, and first thing to mention is you have got the plug attached to it. So wherever you're going to put it, just make sure it's within the reach of the plug, obviously. Uh, the first thing to mention is if you wanted to just have it sat, say, on a base or on the floor or a desk, then that's nice and easy. All you do is you just pop that on there, plug that in, and away you go. So that's one option. The next option is you can actually wall mount this if you want to. So I did show you earlier that it does come with a bag of raw plugs. So you've got four in there and the four screws as well. And to do that, to put it on the wall, all you do is you've got the two screws, two screw holes at the top and you've got the two holes at the bottom here. And then once that's on the wall, then I'll just show you this. The vacuum itself just clips into place like that. So it's a nice simple design. Um, you have got space where you can put a couple of tools as well. So it's a really good design. And then once, I'll just take those off, just make it a little bit easier. So once that's on the wall, then it's actually clipped into place. And then to remove the vacuum from the wall bracket, you just press the button at the top here. So that just, unclips and then you can take the vacuum off. When it's actually on the wall it's actually a really easy design, I have seen it in action. So I'll just show you that again. So the first thing you do is to just pop it on there like that, it clips into place and then to release it just press the button and it's removed like that. So what I'll do is I'll give it a go now and the first one I've got is some rice on the side, then I've got some porridge oats in the middle here and then I've got some cornflakes on the far side. Now just to say the carpet I'm vacuuming on is actually really wiry. Uh, it's quite a horrible carpet that we've got here in our showroom uh, and some vacuums do really struggle with it. So let's give it a go.
considering the carpet that that was on, I actually think this did really well. Uh, the rice went up pretty easily. Uh, to be fair, it struggled a little bit with the porridge oats in the middle, uh, but I was very impressed with the cornflakes. Uh, quite a few vacuums have struggled with larger particles like the cornflakes, so I was really impressed with how they got it up. Now, if you are thinking about buying one of these vacuums, then I have provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on the Hosomi cordless vacuum cleaner. Please give us a thumbs up on a YouTube video, click subscribe and leave any comments below. I'd always ask for comments, whether it's good or bad, about the video itself. Also, if you've got any questions on the Hosomi, then pop it in the comments below and I'll get back to you. I must say, I am actually really impressed with this so far. Uh, it's a brand that hasn't really been around that much in the UK, uh, but I have seen that they have got quite a few good reviews through Amazon mainly. So if you are looking for a budget vacuum, then it's certainly one I'd consider. Thanks for watching.